This battle scene in Spider-Man Far From Home wouldn't have been possible without Harry Potter, The Matrix, or even James Bond. The midway fight sequence called The Illusion Battle was partly inspired by these movies. Although the movie's visual effects were completed by a combination of companies, Framestore was responsible for this thrilling section. Visual effects supervisor Alexis Wojrod, who previously worked on Thor Ragnarok and Doctor Strange, explains to us how it was done. And spoiler alert, we're going to be revealing details about the film. In this sequence, Spider-Man visits what he believes to be the Berlin office of Europol, but instead, it's a trap set by Mysterio. The villain uses holographic techniques and projector drones to create a sequence of horrifying illusions. I know this isn't real. Do you? <laughs> Usually the process is there is a script and then there is a production period where they shoot what the script is and then we are adding visual effects on top in post-production. But on the case of this one, the sequence was not locked at script stage. We were concepting at the same time as we were animating shots. To make a sequence like this, the shots must go through different stages, with 120 employees all working in unison. Modelling, texturing, shading, rigging, animating, rendering and lighting the shot. The movie's star, Tom Holland, has his movements recorded in a motion capture suit, which is then passed to the animators. To begin, the Framestore art department worked on creative references with director John Watts and VFX supervisor Yannick Sers. Visual references included the comic books as well as surrealist paintings. References on YouTube of cool videos that we find with, there were one where a drone was emitting light. We watched that The Matrix for having a lot of Agent Smith was our sequence where there is a lot of Spider-Man jumping onto the main Spidey. Of course, looked at the James Bond title sequence for Spectre. We used that reference for a sequence in the graveyard with Zombie Iron Man. With Marvel, we are doing a lot more in CG, a lot more uh, completely uh, computer generated. Whereas in James Bond, they shot a lot more elements and it's more 2D. The team also used a scene from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix as a reference when orbs fall on the gang. We wanted the globes to be actually Mysterio Glob, Mysterio Helmet to fall, uh, which didn't end up in the movie. We'll even look at Indiana Jones having a giant glob of Mysterio Head uh, chasing Spider-Man, the evil dead for the mirror sequence. I don't think so. Once the references were locked, the team moved to storyboard then concept art. In total, 150 pieces of concept art were produced. These were turned into animations. The transitions from one scene to another were particularly difficult. They used an FX-driven transition dubbed the bath effect, or binarily augmented retroframing, which is based on the transition used by Iron Man in a scene from Captain America's Civil War. What we call that from the blue twinkly effect, which is a lot of blue pixels. What is it that we can make it better? So we transform this 2D pixel into 3D voxels and, uh, and make the effect a bit more 3D. When you transition from one environment to the other, you need the two environments to have some similarities. So for example, at the beginning, we are transitioning from Europol to actually a construction site. That's why we, we completely transform the construction site in full CG. We completely rebuild it to make sense of the geography. So there is always a link. When you are somewhere in Europol, you are somewhere in the construction site. The transitions were also inspired by the Truman Show, namely, the idea of walking into a landscape that turns out to be a different texture, such as a wall or a floor. Effects such as Mysterio's blast or the smoke inside his helmet were created by other vendors, such as Scanline. 
frame store created the effects of green smoke and applied it to different environments. The texture of the smoke can be dry ice, wispy, or thick like a floor. Weather systems were a difficult effect to achieve. For this, the team had to work on the texture of different effects. The one that is actually more complex is uh, the snow interaction on Spider-Man and the building piercing through. Uh, it's really tricky to, to have uh, realistic snow. It always looks a bit like jelly or, or too powdery. The sequence involved three main Spider-Man suits. The homemade suit, as seen in Spider-Man Homecoming. The stealth suit and the homecoming suit. The scene is lit with strong directional light which was a challenge for the texture. Too thin, and the suit starts to show too much muscle definition. Too baggy, and the suit looks ill-fitting and wrinkly. At one stage, we see Spidey in a shard room, where he looks at multiple versions of himself, all moving independently. For this, the team had to create 20 individual animated Spider-Man suits. They also had to design the character suit for Zombie Iron Man. We had some very, very gory version where we still see some bits of skin and muscle and flesh, which was a bit too, too far from Marvel. We went full skeleton and that was not enough. Of course, it's a big challenge to model all of these broken pieces of metal as well as the skull and, and, uh, and then making sure that we shade them correctly. We also used Avengers Edge of Fultron. Uh, as a reference, because there is lots of broken robots with hanging cables and hanging pieces at the beginning of the sequence. We use that as well as a reference to see how, how we can make a zombie Iron Man with all these hanging pieces of metals. The team had worked on similarly trippy sequences in Doctor Strange and Avengers Endgame. In previous Marvel movies, actually, what we cannot do. So we looked at Doctor Strange, okay, we cannot do all of that. Spider-Man got sliced into lots of different pieces in space, but because they've done that in Endgame uh, already, we couldn't do that. The sequence took nine months to make, from first reference to finished product, which was no mean feat given its scale and complexity.